What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you all so much for joining in here with us for an exciting episode here as we are breaking down the ECU-NC State football game. That's right, the first game of the year, getting things rocking and rolling here in 2022. And for this episode, as you might see, there's a lot of red here, but there is one little bit of shade of purple here that, uh, you know, we got we got to figure out who this is, but but we'll go ahead and give it, we'll go ahead and just ruin the surprise for you. So this is Jared here from the Boneyard Podcast. Again, does great, great stuff covering the East Carolina University Pirates, right? Uh, so I think that's the name of it, right, Jared? Yeah, that, that's the name. That's that, the name. That's- that's the name of it. East Carolina <laughs> University, uh, ECU. Yeah. Uh, no. Covering the parts. Love it, man. Love it. Well, again, you know, appreciate you, Jared, again, for, for you know, giving us the opportunity here to break it down a little bit, get let our viewers, let our fans kind of learn a little bit in terms of what they're going to be seeing here uh, on September 3rd, which, again, I think that we all can agree could not get here any slower but i mean it is you know we, we hope it can speed up a little bit here and, and get to it but I, I will go and start off with that the weather as of as of this recording which again is august 24 it doesn't look too shabby because i know that a couple months ago that i mean i think all of us would have said oh my gosh a noon game on september 3rd we are going to be baking but it doesn't look too too bad right now so hopefully we can keep that keep, keep that juju rolling so yeah i mean In Greenville, I mean, anytime it's going to be 84, you're going to have the humidity. I mean, if you've ever spent time in Greenville or in, it's kind of like Fayetteville where it's just kind of got that humidity Mm -hmm. in it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be hotter than, I think, I think the forecast was showing like 84 last time I looked. Yep. But yeah, it's way too early to to even be thinking about that yep yeah no well you know it's, it's just it's just kind of like that that shimmer of hope because because to me i'd rather feel like i'm in a swimming pool than be absolutely baking so uh you know but again it depends uh you know on who you talk to really when, when it comes to that um so jared kind of uh talking a little bit here so so obviously ecu football so so we were kind of talking a little bit uh you know here beforehand and you were saying that there's definitely some high expectations for this season um, you know, obviously led by your quarterback, Holt Naylor's that, uh, uh, you know, for those who don't know when Holt made his decision, it was between ECU and NC state, but let's be real. Let's be real. I, I we all knew he was going to go to ECU, especially with his father being the PA announcer for the pirates and being from the area. It's like, yeah. And him, him having the opportunity to be yeah. the hometown hero, like, you know, it's there. And then we already had Devin Leary who, who Holt Naylor is going to be going against as well. So it just made too much sense for him to go to go to uh, ECU. So definitely no shocker there. But, you know, kind of talk a little bit in terms of what what makes you feel like there's such high expectations for this season and how important is it, would you say, for Mike Houston's career or, or, or era, per se, that he performs well this season? Yeah, I mean, looking back, the, the last two years, I mean, if you if you take out the COVID year or if you really, like, dissect the COVID year, there, there was a lot of games in that year where the, the Pirates were very competitive in, in a lot of those games. Uh, one of those games we we lost, there was we lost several guys due to COVID mm-hmm. during that season. Like We had to shut down several times, just like most teams in the country. But, uh, I mean, there was a game where I, I think it was Navy or Tulane, I, I believe it was Navy, right before the game, like there was rumors that whole Nailers wasn't going to play mm-hmm. because he had COVID. And literally – I, I can we confirmed and broke the news probably about 45 minutes before kickoff that whole nailers was not playing in that game and ECU ended up losing by a touchdown right mm-hmm. and there were so many games where they were just so close even in the COVID year um, they ended up going three and six that year uh, just still wasn't a, a very good season well last year they they ended up uh, seven and five in, in the regular season and there was really only two games that were not really close. It was the app state game week one in Charlotte and bank of America. And then the, the last game against uh, eventual college football playoff uh, member mm-hmm. Cincinnati. And I mean, those games were still very close during, during the first half, but the, those teams just kind of pulled away in the second half. Other than that, every game last year for the pirates decided by a touchdown or less. I mean, yeah. you're talking week two, you have South Carolina on the ropes. They come down. They come storming back in the in the third and fourth quarter in the second half. They come back, win the game on a on a game winning field goal at the last second. Mm-hmm. I mean, you go into Marshall. You're down big. You come back. You you win that game 
in, in the fourth quarter after making a 20 point comeback. Uh, I mean, you had so many times where this team could have really just shifted in and we said, okay, this, this is the same old, same old as it has been for the last seven years. Yep. But it, it wasn't that coach Houston has, has changed this men- the mentality in this team. You look at a team like Houston, ECU took them to overtime in Houston. ECU was beating UCF last year in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. and lost in the last two minutes of that mm-hmm. game. And I mean, these are teams that ECU has now coming into their into their stadium and has an opportunity to show in front of in front of a fifty one thousand pack stadium in Dowdy Ficklin that hey, like th- this atmosphere can compete with any, and, and the atmosphere can play a big role. They got a bunch of big games at home this year. Mm-hmm. And and that's why I think the expectations are so high is because last year you you almost beat so many of these teams. And if you didn't beat them or if you didn't almost beat them, you beat them. And you, you've got this you've got this good opportunity this year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and you know, and kind of talking about, you know, this year as well, you know, obviously, you know, right as of right now, Vegas has stayed favored in this game by, you know, 10 to 11, depending on where you look, give or take. Uh, but I mean, I think all of us NC State fans, you know, know that I mean the fact we haven't won at ECU since 2005, if I'm not mistaken, 2000, 2005, 2007, something like that. Uh, you know, obviously, like with uh, the heartbreaker in, t- in 2010, where we lost in overtime with Russell Wilson, uh, you know, and et cetera. So uh, you know, I, there's not a single 2007. It was okay, cool. It was 2007. Uh, so 2007. You know, obviously, there's there's not a single State fan that's looking past TCU and knows. That it's going to be a challenge. Obviously, even though that we feel that just like you guys, that there's a lot of expe- expectations for us this year to perform, that we know that even though we're 10, 11 point favorites, we're not overlooking ECU whatsoever because we know it's going to be a tough environment in Greenville for sure. And as, like, as I actually went to that South Carolina ECU game last year because my wife is a, is a Gamecock and uh, it, you know, it definitely kind of made me think think back going man a year from now i'm going to be back here in greenville cheering for nc state versus ecu so uh you know what's what's your kind of expectations you know about this game you know in terms of uh, i mean are you like a, a, like if you had to kind of give like a one to ten because i'm sure that you probably think that ecu is going to win uh but you know give me like a one to ten in terms of how confident you are ecu is going to win yeah i, I would say on, on a one to ten scale i'm um I, I'm never. I don't want to say too high, but I, I would say probably. I, I I feel they'll I'll feel they'll win. Um, just with all that's riding on this game, um, I, I think that it's a big game for both schools, both mm-hmm. teams. Um, I think that this, even though it's the first week of the season, there's so much hype around NC State, and rightfully so, um, that it could end up being a trap game for them. Um, for for the Wolfpack, and so that's why I, I put it at about six point five. I, I would say, um, but I am, okay. I am confident. Uh, I, I am confident in, in our Pirates, and um, I, I've I've said it. I've said it multiple times on our podcast that I, I, I've called a win. Um, and and that maybe that's a homer take, but uh, hey, I mean I'm I'm an ECU guy, so I got I got to take that take. Well, because you go ahead, go ahead, Hicken, go ahead. Hey, McKin. Well, I want to say this one on McKenzie had us had us yeah. uh, a, a very interesting record prediction for us going through this season. So I think uh, we all had pretty high rec- had records yeah, too for Covino. NC State. I think no shot. State going on. Me no shot. Mom, I think it was. Me, me and my mom have been butting heads for the past. <laughs> hey man, you never know. You never know. So it's so mm. I know not. Mom's a good past. lady. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see though. Well, here the um the uh. My, what I'm what I'm curious about though is you. So you're saying you feel pretty confident, and we've talked a little bit about Holt Nailers. If you want to expound on that, you can. But what gives you uh, the confidence? Do you feel like that? I'm not saying that you shouldn't have that, but what may get, what details can you give to point? Look, these are the I mean, reasons you, you've why got two I think you see talented will win quarterbacks. The game. I mean, I think when you look at the quarterback position, Devin Leary, he's getting a lot of praise, and like I said, rightfully so. Um, Holt Nailers, I think he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in college football going into this year. Um, I mean, he, he draws a lot of comparisons to a guy like Tim that. Tebow. I mean, left-handed, he, he's kind of a dual threat quarterback. He, uh, he's 6'4", 235 pounds. I, I think that's what he's listed at. So not only can he throw the ball, 
he can he can run the rock. I mean, the, I, I saw him. I've seen him multiple times run over guys on the def- defensive line, just mowed right down and mow, mow them down. So um, I, I would say that that's a wash. Um, I think the the reason I'm giving the edge is it's going to be a lit atmosphere like that. I, I think the atmosphere at, at both stadiums, really. I mean, if, if this game were play, being played at Carter Finley, I, I probably wouldn't feel as confident. Um, but considering that it's being played in Dowdy Ficklin, um, you're, you're going to have all those students and, and all those fans getting lubed up at 4 a.m. on on <laughs> Saturday. I, I think that that's gonna that's gonna do something for for ecu and um i I think when it when it comes to i mean y'all's defense is is outstanding that that's my that's my biggest fear is seeing y'all's defense just run right over our offensive line and that that's where ecu struggled over the past three or four years is at the offensive line but they really shored that up that's that's the position group that needed the uh the enhancements and, and they got that uh they they got They've gotten bigger. They've gotten stronger. They've gotten more athletic. Brought in um, last year. They brought in a center from Carolina, Avery Jones. Um, last then this past off season, brought in a, a offensive lineman from West Virginia, Parker Moore. Uh, I mean, these guys are big. They've got big game experience, and I mean, so so do most of our uh, skill players. I mean, our our wide receivers. I, I would put our wide receivers up against anybody, and I, I think. Our running back duo, maybe, I, I, our running back duo is the best running back duo in, in the quote unquote group of five, but I would say that they're one of the top running back duos that's not being really talked about in, in the country. Keen Mitchell is, go ahead. Well, yeah, can you, yeah, talk about Keaton Mitchell. I was going to say that because I, I saw he was like, um, they I saw, saw a ranking that put out with American American Conference and essentially had. Keaton Mitch, Mitchell, I think, only be the best running back that was, but he was like the fourth best player considered in the conference overall. Um, yeah. So, can you talk about him? I don't. So, can you I give mean, some background Mitchell, he's, he's a junior. Really know anything about his, him. His third season, um, with all the COVID and COVID years, I, I don't know. I guess you still are considered a junior, but um, he, he's last year he was he was probably number two on the depth chart. This guy is maybe the fastest guy I've seen in college football. Just if he gets to the second level, he's going to be gone. If he gets to that second level, you better watch out. And then you got Rajay Harris, who they're best friends. They've known each other since a very young age, even before high school. Um, they're best friends. He's the number two. He's kind of a, a bulkier back. He's going to be your your short down back, right? If you if you need to get a third and one conversion, he's going to be the guy you hand it to. But Keen Mitchell, he it's nothing for him to break off a 70 yard run and take it to the house and everybody's chasing him. I mean, that man looks like he's being chased by dogs every single day. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group that has your whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because one thing, like, and and again, this is just from, you know, obviously stuff which I've noticed also to, you know, to two big factors is obviously, you know, first of all, I mean, I was losing Tyler Sneed for sure. I mean, I, that was whole Naylor's main guy. That was the guy last year. You know, when you, when, when you, uh, you know, talked about the wide receiver core, he was the highlight for sure. Um, you know, so losing him. And then one thing with Keaton Mitchell, which I wanted to kind of ask you about is that, so I, I've heard this stat and I could be wrong, but I know it's generally in the right ballpark that, that roughly, that a little bit less than 30% of his rushing attempts accounted for over 60%, 60% of his rushing yards, meaning that, you know, he's a guy that like, you know, if, if he got one, he was gone, but yeah. So he was very kind of boomer bust kind of a deal, which, you know, can, can come a lot from the fact that, I mean, he's, you know, definitely, you know, a smaller guy, but he's a very speed guy per se, you know? So do you kind of come into the season thinking that, you know, that, 
we may see a different side to him where he's more balanced or uh, do you see more of that boom or bust kind of deal heading into this season? That's just kind of the kind of running back he is. I mean, it, it's going to be running back by committee. The, the, those two guys, you, you, it's not anything crazy to see Coach Houston, Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick, the offensive coordinator, throw out Roger Harris on, on the first down, first and 10. Um, it, if you see that, it, it's not going to shock me. It, they they look at the different schemes and, and look at how the defense line is lined up and make that call. You'll you'll see these guys substitute out for one another all game long. Um, so if they see something that they like, they see a matchup they like, then they're going to put Keaton Mitchell out there. And like I said, if he gets to that second level, he's gone. Now that I would say, yeah, he is kind of a boomer bust, but he's he's still gonna he's still gonna get his yards. Um, and he he's he's five nine. He's one hundred and eighty one pounds. So yeah, he is a smaller running back, but he he's so shifty. Like I said, if if he gets to the outside, he gets to the second level, it, it's game over for for that play. So I'm going to add this for our state fans comparison. I just looked this up. He is right on the same build height um, weight wise as uh, Jordan Houston for the state fans. He just sounds like he's a little bit faster. I know Jordan Houston's are probably going to be our starting running back for the season, um, Jared, but he, and he's a guy who's who really has waited his turn, um, but he's, he is kind of got, he's a five, nine, 180 pound running back who is known for being more of that shifty speed kind of guy. But it, I mean, he doesn't have the, th- the 1100 yards that um, Keaton Mitchell had last season. So, just for Gift State fans, a uh, relative comparison, what they're looking at stature wise, it's like a Jordan Houston, but maybe has and, and gotten something way about Keaton Mitchell. I mean, he came in as a more. freshman, and he he and Rajay Harris they were third and fourth on the depth chart at, at run in the running back room, and by about week eight, they were the one and two. They 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 catapulted themselves into the one and two because they were mm. they were able to succeed early on. And now that they have just another year under under their belt, I mean, I, I think that they're gonna they're gonna put up some gaudy numbers this year. So let me ask you this question then. Um, I want to ask what how how do ACU fans what what is their how do they feel about Mike Houston as a coach? You know, because I mean, every every fan base has their own view of their own football coach or basketball coach or what have you, but. Houston came from James Madison. My in-laws, uh, they have their graduates from James Madison. Watched a game there at with Mike Houston when he was at JMU. Um, Mike Houston is in fourteen and nineteen, I think, at ECU heading into this season. Um, but he just got his first winning season last year because they got y'all finished at seven and five, I think it was. So, um, can you talk about that? Yeah, is there I, a, I think the fan base the from, fans have about Mike. There, there's been times where they questioned play calling. Um, but really, that that was directed more at, at the uh, one of the coordinators. Um, but that turned around later on in the season last year. But when you look at it, Mike Houston came into okay. ECU, and he talks about it in almost every press conference leading up to the season. He he's talked about it extensively that when he got here, there was I mean, Scotty Montgomery was one of the worst coaches in college football that anybody could have ever hired. That. <laughs> That whole that whole situation yes. was yes. mishandled from the get go. <laughs> Ruffin McNeil, hey, shout out, y'all got him, friend of the. We appreciate it, Fr- friend, say, friend of the podcast. And I said, how do y'all feel yeah. about that? Friend of that? the podcast, we we we've had we've had him on. Love yes. Ruff. Oh, okay, okay, well, okay. When that when that all happened, it it was terrible. Like that whole administration is gone, and yeah, now the new I administration they brought in Mike Houston. They've done a really good job about hiring coaches. And extending coaches, I mean, Mike Houston earned an extension last year, so to keep him from going to the Power Five, um, the the thing is, is he's had like Scott under Scotty Montgomery, they weren't hitting in practice. This team was not physical at all. They they were guys that would come out. Yeah, they, they weren't. They hitting. weren't hitting in practice. They weren't hitting in practice. The, the, like they they would hit, they would do like That's hitting weird. like once every <laughs> couple of weeks. Like they weren't physical at all like i mean and this is a guy that he was a wide receiver Hmm. wide receiver coach that and then he lucked into an offensive coordinator job at duke wasn't even playing calling the plays at duke and then got got a head coaching job at ecu 
I don't get it. Like that, that was like, they, they were talking about bringing in Brady Hoke at one point before Scotty Montgomery. And I was like, yo, really? like, do it, do it. <laughs> and, and that didn't happen. But Mike Houston has turned this program around. Like I said, he's added size. He's added that physicality. I mean, he, he has these guys playing with a mean streak. I mean, last year, that was one of the most physical teams I've seen. I, I, I haven't seen a team at ECU hit like that since probably the 2014 season. I mean, and that, that was the season, the uh, 10 win season. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's what I, I see. I, I see a lot of people like him. He's, he's a much better recruiter than Scotty Montgomery. Um, and I, I thought that was the only thing Scotty Montgomery had over rough. Um, what was how good of a recruiter he was. He was getting, he was getting high three stars and some low four stars at the time. But um, Mike Houston goes in and, and he's, he's a guy that isn't afraid to, to take a guy and, and make him into a pirate. And, and that's, that's what I love about him. And EC fans feel the same thing. I love it. I have wow. a question about you saying the 6.5 or six and a half of you being that confident. Um, the environment, obviously, I've been to so many EC games. The environment there is insane. Uh, it's kind of like state. But with how many state fans that are planning to make that trip, do you still think it's going to be a 90-10 environment or do you think it's going to be more of a split in half environment? Um, I, w- I would say that it's probably going to be, I would say probably closer to 85, 15, 75, 25, um, split. I mean, yeah, I, I agree e- with that. E- ECU is, is, has done a pretty good job of selling out tickets. I mean, I, I know the lower bowl completely sold out already. Mm-hmm. I mean, the lower bowl sold out last week. Yeah. We're up um, <laughs> the, they've, they've, um, the the upper deck is is still there's still some seats there but it's very very scarce. Um, now look when when you go to these games uh, look I've gone to plenty of ECU NC State ECU Carolina games and you see that look there's going to be state fans scattered out and throughout those that crowd but it, it's not going to be very like it, it, they're they're going to be in their one section over there uh on uh, down on the end zone. And then you're gonna have a couple scattered throughout the crowd, and I, I don't, I don't see it being that much of a factor, playing that much of a factor in, into the game. And look, Scotty Montgomery, as as much as much mm-hmm. shit. Sorry, if, can I say that on y'all's podcast? I don't know, but um, it, yeah, <laughs> as much as as much well, just did, as so I good. give him, <laughs> like I, I talk crap about Scotty Montgomery all the time, all the time. Hate Scotty Montgomery, worst college football coach that I've ever seen. Look. He had nine wins in, in his career at ECU. Mm-hmm. Number two against NC State at home. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let, 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 let's. Oh, I, I would I would say that that is that maybe yeah. one of Dave Doran's worst losses, probably. And, and I don't mean that. I don't mean that negatively. Like he, he, you, you can't lose to ECU. I, I think I think. St- State fans and ACC teams or any Power Five teams in general look okay. If you're playing a non-Power Five team, you shouldn't lose to them. But everybody, it was. I think that was Scotty Montgomery's second game of this of his career, and we lost. Mm-hmm. And I like I remember him going up after the game and doing like this. Yeah, and I was he, like, he, this is so stupid. Oh yeah, it, it was a, it was a I tight think the score game. Was it was a very tight I game. Think, I think. Um, yeah, that and that that's what Scotty Montgomery was. That was his biggest win. So mm-hmm. was beating state, and I mean that that was oh that was the biggest thing for him, and I mean then the next week he almost beat South Carolina at South Carolina. Had he won those first three games, had he won that game at South Carolina, I wonder if that would have been a, put him on a different trajectory here at ECU. Yeah. Well, and uh, we'll definitely have to take a pause right there, folks, as again, uh, we'll definitely pick this conversation right back up where we left off here in part two. Um, but again, y'all, uh, you know, make sure again, obviously a huge game go- going on here. And if you want to check out more of uh, of Jared and the Boneyard podcast uh, uh, previews uh, heading up to NC State game, make sure to check them out on uh, Spotify and, and all the all the podcasts. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. everywhere. Cool. The premier podcast of Pirate Nation, y'all. <laughs> hey 
I, you know, glad to have you on. So, so, all right, y'all. Well, again, make sure if you, you haven't already, again, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, which is free to do. And to make sure you don't miss out whenever we release any new NC State content, give this uh, video a like as well if you're an NC State fan to let us know that you are an NC State fan. And if you think NC State is going to beat ECU, hit that like button Smash specifically. That button. Smash, Smash it. it. And then Smash actually, give button. us a <laughs> give us a follow at Tuffy Talk now on Twitter or Instagram. But we'll see y'all for part two. As always, go pack, y'all.